Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Lloyd Skinner. I'm the CEO of Greyfly.ai. For those that don't know, we've created an intelligent project prediction tool that uses AI to deliver executives project intelligence to increase project success. Today, I'm going to introduce my, my guest um, who, who um, has many years experience around projects and programs, is US based, um, and um, I'll let him introduce himself in one second. But we're going to talk about the application of AI, how it can be used in project management and the benefits. Um, Kim, over to you to introduce yourself. Hi, Lloyd. Thanks for having me. My name is Kim Essendrup. I am uh, one of the founders of Call Me Group. We're a sort of a boutique pro project and portfolio management consultancy, and we implement some of the top tier project and portfolio management tools on the market and work management. I started actually technical in my career and moved into project management, program management, PMO management, and finally came full circle and combined my love of technology with my love of project management. I'm also one of the I'm also co-host of the Project Management Happy Hour podcast. Fantastic. Well, we make sure that we'll, we'll include that so others can can uh, link into that. So um, if I may, I'm going to jump straight into some questions. Um, so first of all, um, use cases for AI in project management. Do, 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 what do you see as, as the use cases? I, I see a lot of opportunities for um, for AI and in project management. So I think one of the, the first challenges we have from an, especially from an internal PMO perspective is getting realistic expectations for project delivery during the initial planning cycle, especially for organizations, they do maybe annual planning or even quarterly planning for selecting their projects. There is a lot of scenario planning, a lot of looking at different project options to try to determine where best to invest capital spend, where you're going to get the greatest value. And that can be challenging to really get a, a, a good understanding of what is a realistic expectation for duration, for cost. We can try to find ways to work in contingencies, but if we can have some way to learn lessons from past similar projects in, in an intelligent way, that can really help us with our project planning and be more pragmatic and more realistic about planning projects that can give us real value. I would also say beyond that, uh, two main areas I think that there are there is great promise are first of all risk planning, risk planning and mitigation. Um, you know we know from many studies that are out there. I know the Standish Groups does their chaos report I think annually, and usually the numbers are quite grim. Project success rates are 19, 20 percent maybe. Uh, 30, 31 percent of projects fail, and the rest sort of flounder in between. So we know things go wrong with projects. Um, and we should have some data from past project risks log and issues log. The challenge is translating that data into something meaningful that we can make decisions and plan contingencies off of. So I think there's a great opportunity there. Um, and then finally, I think for professional services, particularly larger organizations where you have a lot of, uh, a lot of projects and a lot of revenue going through, um, it can be challenging to accurately forecast revenue. And it's very important, especially if you're a public organization and you have professional services, you have uh, monthly expectations, you have uh, quarterly revenue reporting, and uh, we forecast hundreds of projects thousands of times. And so if we could learn from that data and give ourselves some confidence on the accuracy of that revenue reporting, I, I think that could really help us out a lot with some more, um, more accurate revenue forecasting. That's excellent. Thanks for that, Kim. You, you, you're actually the first person that is, is, is mentioned this point about, you know, the annual budgeting cycle and having, you know, uh, for want of a better term, a more informed view of that. Uh, um, so that's fantastic use use case there, and 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 you know I I, I guess that wouldn't be not just a more informed view or or perhaps a more accurate view, but perhaps even the speed that it was created as well. It is to comb through historical data, assuming that you've got that data 
it's it's difficult to comb through a lot of that. How far do you go? What's relevant? What's not relevant? And even within in, within that data, there are so many different dimensions to consider. Who was the project manager uh, for the la last times that this happened? Uh, who were the customers? What were the subcontractors we had? What was the duration? So many factors that it's it's really it can be very hard for us to wrap our heads around and bring some meaningful value out of all that data. Yeah, I can imagine you know, traditionally, perhaps a whole team is put together to examine and undertake that and, and, and you know, the team as in multiple individuals, and that might take days, if not weeks. And then, of course, you present a report and as, as soon as you have presented it, perhaps it's out of date as well. It is. I, I think more often than not, it's really a couple of key people maybe scrolling through past projects or those. It's more that it's from your memory and really using intuition. Intuition is is valuable and it has its place. But you know, with with the technology we have today, there are better ways to analyze that volume of data and get get value out of it. Yeah, I, I talk almost the, the the string of that intuition, you know, the string of that intelligence, you know, you know, two brains are better than one or <laughs> multiple brains are better than one. And we've sort of touched on this, but in terms of those three use cases, you know, what are the big benefits you would see? Well, uh, from project selection, it's really being able to pick the projects that will give you the the best bang for your buck in the line to help you help you move ahead your strategic priorities as an organization um, and do it. Do it considering your past performance. I, I think a lot of times in that situation we try to we try to do things like using multi criteria analysis where you'd maybe try different per, different parameters of value. What's the risk? What is the benefit? And we try to try to have uh, decision making tools like this to help us out and, and they do help. But I think there are, are better ways to do that to help you make sure you get the best portfolio and the best value for that. Um, that investment in your capital spend. Excellent, excellent. And, and and obviously, you know, you touched on the uh, accurate forecasting with revenue predictions. I mean, the, I presume there's a whole stream of activity that can fall off the back of that. There is. And, you know, I, I've, I having worked in professional services most of my career, I can really sympathize with uh, the management teams in these because they're held accountable for they've got revenue targets that they're accountable for revenue and gross profit. And there are in some organizations, there is incredible scrutiny. I know organizations where they have their management team has three, four, even five meetings a week trying to understand where they are from a revenue perspective, where are they going to land, where are the gaps, what's slipping. Um, and there there is data there that should help us better predict where we're going to land with individual projects, which the roll up to a predictor for where we're going to land from a overall portfolio perspective. But it's really hard to learn from that. If we could learn how to forecast more accurately, then not only does that help us as a management team set expectations with our executive management on where we're going to land for the quarter, but it also lets, lets us proactively start looking at, well, where do we see revenue consistently falling off? Where are our, our forecasts can, uh, typically off? And try to investigate that, understand that, and improve that. Yeah, and again, I guess a last point dovetails with your risk scenario in a way, but because you know, if you've got a better handle on risks, I presume there's a direct relationship with increasing project success as well. There is, a, you know, risks and having things go wrong is just a natural part of project management. This is why we have project managers to go and manage that and and try to respond to those risks and minimize the impacts. But we know that they happen, so the question is, what are we going to do about it? And if we could use more of a data driven approach that could help us understand where do things really typically go wrong and be more proactive about that in many organizations, it can be a little taboo to talk about risk or everybody wants to have this sort of uh, um, positive outlook or they, they're afraid of having a bias. Oh, they, sorry, let me rephrase that. There's a lot of bias towards positive outcome because project managers, we like to go in, we like to deliver projects, we like to see them succeed. And so we want to try to push them towards success. And our management team has invested in this project. They have a bias towards assuming things are going to go well because they're probably yeah. op optimistic and have invested in this project. But that bias can sometimes make us blind to things that can go wrong. And if we have systems in place to help us understand where things are more likely to go wrong, then that helps us proactively 
respond to that? Yeah, you know, uh, another first, actually. You're the first person that's mentioned the word bias in all of this. And I, I think it's really interesting. If we, we talk about what we, we were saying earlier about realistic plans, if you like, I mean, the whole point of this is perhaps AI can, can take some of that bias away. Uh, absolutely. Um, bias is just the way that the human mind works. If we look at some of the work by uh, Dr. Ramirez has done, the whole field of study around um, cognitive bias, and uh, the, he, he writes content around sort of the Freakonomics of project management and how the way people think affects the way we plan uh, because of our biases. And one of the things he advocates is really put risks forward, look at where risks can go wrong before we start estimating our work. Uh, but even so, we still struggle with our biases. And so if we can have uh, data interpreted in a non-biased way, that can help inform our decision making and maybe hopefully bring us a little bit out of our biases and more into a realistic planning mode. Fantastic. Um, m m moving on, I mean, do, do you see these type of use cases differ between sectors, between types of companies? I, I think the, the first and the second use case are Tip, they're um, typical to the kind of organization, whether or kind or the kind of portfolio, rather, in that when we do a project selection exercise and we're budgeting and we're trying to find out how to get the most out of our capital, that's more of an internal PMO function. And I think that is completely independent. It's agnostic. It doesn't matter what organization you're in, what, what kind of industry. If you've got capital spend, you want to make sure that you make the most of that spend and you get the greatest value for that investment. And the same thing for the last case, which is the idea of more accurate revenue prediction. If you're, and that would, of course would fit for project delivery where they're revenue generating uh, projects, which are usually customer facing. But again, I think that's that's independent, whether you're in more manufacturing um, or if you're in software services, whatever it is, um, that's still going to be a struggle that you face on a regular basis. And the second case on risk, regardless of it's an internal project funded by CapEx or an external project funded by the customer, things can and do go wrong. And so I, th I think uh, regardless of your industry or even whether you're an internal or external facing project, risk is something that we all could use help with uh, in <laughs> forecasting and planning. So, 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 you know, to play that back, we, we, we're sort of sector agnostic around AI and project management and, and possibly benefits in all sectors. This, this, this obviously just sounds too good. I mean, the, 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 there's got to be some challenges in this, surely. Yes, I, I think, uh, and, and this is where I think we'd fall more into your area of expertise than mine, but uh, I think part of the challenge is really looking after the data and getting good data in so that you can put together some models. Um, I, in implementing project and portfolio management tools, I'm really constantly surprised at the low level of maturity a lot of organizations are faced with. They're struggling because they're managing projects and spreadsheets and more simplified systems. So, uh, I think that's that's the main challenge is getting consistent and governed uh, data. And it doesn't have to be everything. You don't have to have every small bit of data in your system. And, and if you try to achieve that as your first stop, you're probably going to fail. Uh, start off simply, start off with high level data that you need to at least get an understanding of where your projects are and what they are and track that in a consistent data. It's better to have fewer data, but more consistently managed and governed than a whole catalog of data uh, when a lot of it might not be governed or might not even be complete or, or correct. So I, I would see that as, as the first thing. The second thing would be from an adoption perspective. It's the idea that tools like incorporating AI into project management, it does not replace human thought or human decision making at all, but it is it helps inform that decision making. It helps support it so that you have better decision making all the way around. So um, just ma managing a little bit of those expectations of what an AI solution is and is not in the, the project area would be important too. Yeah, I guess, and that goes for you know almost any system install or any project change management is a is a key, you know. So so, and it, I totally concur about the, the 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 data challenge, and it's it's interesting, you know. We, we're talking about this from an AI and project management point of view. You're talking about it with your experience of implementing PPM tools, and I I can imagine, you know, swap the the the, the tool for want of a better phrase, you know, it's the same challenges. 
It is, and it's it's funny. I, I in speaking with uh, a lot of our clients, so we've implemented tools to over 400 clients by now, and you know, it's every customer thinks that whoa, they have whoa, the whoa, worst hold on data. A second, just just in case people <laughs> didn't hear that, over 400 installs. Yeah, so 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 this man knows his stuff. Yeah, uh, we've we've spoken with a lot of worked with a lot of clients in a lot of sectors at a lot of levels of maturity, and it, almost every time everybody thinks that they are the least mature organization in the world that they are the only they're oh we're the worst ones you've ever dealt with and you know it's it's I think it's usually reassuring for them to to say you know these are common sure. challenges everybody faces uh, everybody wants to have better data everybody wants to have better controls and better understanding their portfolios but. It's a challenge everybody faces. I, I love that. I, I, I'm, I'm not calling out any names, but I can tell you I've had at least three meetings today where I've discussed current data maturity. And and for me, it's, you know, you, the, the quicker you get on the bike, the quicker you can resolve it, you know. It is. It's it's achievable. It, you've got to have some support and you've got to understand why you're trying to do it and educate your team on that. And I think put some simple controls in place is really what you need to do and just start doing it. And it's 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 very achievable. Well, that, that segues into my next question really nicely. It, it, what can you do to make this happen? You know, if we've got these great benefits. Um, yes, it might be complex in areas, but what, what can we do as an organization to move forward? Well, I, I think you've got to start with what's the value you're trying to get out of it. Um, you're in be pragmatic about it. You're not going to achieve all the potential values out of any kind of technology all at once. Really focus on what is your current business problem that you need to solve. Is it that risks keep surprising you and your projects keep going crazy wildly off track because you're surprised? Is it that you don't feel for whatever reason that you are really getting the value out of your capital investment or you could do better? Is it that as a management team, you keep consistently being surprised by massive swings in your revenue forecasts each month or each quarter. <clears throat> Figure out what the business problem is very uh, to, to start with, and then work your way backwards from there to say, if this is our problem and we are going to implement um, an AI solution to do this, what do we need to get? What is the AI solution we needed to get to help us meet that need, to help us get informed and provide better decision-making or planning around that? And then whoever you work with in that respect will help you work backwards again from there and say, what are, what's the key data that we need? What are the key data points? Then you can put in processes and systems to start collecting that and ensure the quality of it. But it really, you've got to start with that end in mind and understand what is the business problem that you need to, to solve, why, and then work your way back from there. Brilliant. It sounds like a project again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so last question, last question, if I may, if if there was one takeaway that 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 um, our listeners could 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 um, 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 improve their their likelihood of success in this area, or 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 or, or the whole point around AI and project management, what what, what would your takeaway be? Um, I I think you need to, I, if I could say two things. Uh, so <laughs> one would can. be uh, make sure you partner with somebody who's going to be with you on, on the journey because it's it, it's going to take time. It's not something where you install a software, you install a CD to a server, turn it on, and now you're done and you're ready to go. Uh, you need to, when you partner with somebody, think of it's going to be a longer term partnership. Uh, it's going to be a very valuable partnership for you, but make sure that you've got that good uh, partner to work with you along the way. And the second part of that is, which is tied in, which is realize it's going to be a journey. Um, you, you're on a journey of discovery to understand, you know, what are the factors that influence aspects of your um, your project delivery um, and, and affect those key areas you need to focus on. And as time goes on and with the help of this amazing technology, you're going to learn so much more about that. And you're going to find new dimensions that you want to focus on. It's going to take you all different places. So uh, it's not a quick fix. It's a long term journey uh, and you need to be ready to uh, sit in and invest your time and effort to get those long term benefits. But I think you'll find it's worth it. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Kim. That's been absolutely great and great insights. So, so thank you once again. You're very welcome, Lloyd. It's been a pleasure. No problem at all.